American in the company softball game or after a hard Saturday morning working in the yard. Strenuous activity on the job can even have you gasping for breath. You need oxygen. Without an adequate supply in an emergency, you can die. Quick, what are you going to do to help your fellow worker? Now is the most crucial time of any emergency, especially if they have a possible heart attack and a chance of oxygen deprivation. The first four minutes is critical in saving a life and preventing permanent brain damage. Remember your ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. Check each one to make sure the victim is breathing. In case of a cardiac emergency, such as a heart attack or angina pectoris, only someone trained in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, should attempt it. And supplying supplemental oxygen to such a victim is a valuable adjunct in CPR. Angina pectoris, usually simply called angina, develops when the heart needs more oxygen than it's able to get. Supplemental oxygen should be given to anyone with chest pain and any patient in critical condition. Because oxygen is so crucial in a life-threatening emergency, many companies are making supplemental oxygen supplies part of their first aid kits. A constant flow of pure, medical-grade oxygen decreases the risk of oxygen deprivation and permanent disabilities. In fact, for any accident or injury which impairs the body's ability to transport oxygen to the tissues, an increase in the oxygen supply is most beneficial. Many medical experts recognize that the administration of pure oxygen is the number one first aid procedure for near drowning victims. It's also the number one procedure for victims of decompression sickness, arterial gas embolism, and pulmonary overpressure accidents. And in cases of carbon monoxide poisoning, a free flowing supply of enriched oxygen through a tight fitting mask aids in replacing the gas in the bloodstream with life-sustaining oxygen. However, because oxygen fires burn at higher temperatures, supplies should not be used or stored near open flames, burning cigarettes, or other flammable substances such as grease or oil. For most medical emergencies, it's recommended that the oxygen concentration be less than 50%. However, for use in sudden death emergencies, the oxygen concentration may be as near as 100% as possible to achieve the maximum medical benefits. Oxygen equipment for emergencies and over-the-counter use should be filled with medical-grade oxygen and only by a licensed company. Supplemental oxygen supplies should only be used in an emergency. The emergency oxygen unit should consist of a portable container holding medical-grade oxygen, a dispensing device consisting of pressure-reducing equipment capable of maintaining a constant flow of at least six liters of oxygen per minute for a minimum of 15 minutes, a gauge or content indicator, a non-kinkable hose, and a mask or other means of administering the oxygen to the patient. A variety of masks can be purchased for most units, allowing rescuers to help either a conscious or unconscious breathing victim or one who is not breathing on their own. At full pressure like this tank and administered to a breathing victim, a supplemental supply of oxygen can last up to an hour. When a cylinder's pressure approaches 200 to 500 PSI, or less than one quarter contents, it should be changed and refilled. Never let a tank become completely empty because condensation inside the cylinder can result. To check to see if the regulator is working properly, attach it to a full cylinder, pressurize, and check for leaks. If okay, first breathe shallow through the mask and then hard and fast. You should be able to do both with no trouble. Understanding the safe use of supplemental oxygen supplies gives you another tool in making your job a safe one. It's literally the breath of life. This is Claude Aikens reminding you that safety is your job too.